Um, I know everybody is aware of these, but I just felt the need to remind us. These Gideon uh, uh, cards are to be used by you. Um, they can be used to give to someone uh, of a family who has lost a family member. You can send them or bring them a card at their viewing or the funeral. Um, you can give one to someone who's graduating from high school or college or something like that. There's different purposes for sending a card, just like there's different purposes for you to send any card. Um, but the, the main purpose for using the Gideon card is because instead of buying flowers, which are expensive, mm -hmm. you can take that same amount of money and give it to, to the Gideons to buy Bibles to be passed out to someone who doesn't have a Bible and doesn't know Jesus. Amen. And the money really is spent in a, in a better way. And that's what those are for in case you were not aware of it out there on the uh, little table out in the foyer. Um, but I just felt the need to remind us about it because quite honestly, uh, I have kind of let it slip in my own mind. Um, just this week, we had a friend of ours pass away, and they'll be having the funeral uh, this week, this upcoming week, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take them a card instead of buy flowers and, and take them. So uh, just keep that in mind uh, as you want to be passing out cards to different people for different reasons. Um, <clears throat> if you would turn to... Uh, Mark chapter 14 I had this this, this uh, revelation this week I've learned some new technology tricks <laughs> that's amazing for me but I've learned that I can take and print something on my phone and then send it to my wireless printer and it prints it out according to the font size that my phone tells it to and so then I can read it without my glasses. It's pretty big print. You might could read it from where you're at. I don't know. But I like it because it helps me. Um, I don't have to constantly take my glasses on and, and, and off uh, during the preaching time. But I failed to put this on there, so I'm going to have to use my glasses for it. This is actually... Um, uh, possibly a true story. And it's called catapultry. Uh, an old legend of uncertain origin and sometimes it does take a rocket scientist, but scientists at NASA built a gun specifically to launch standard four-pound dead chickens at the windshields of airliners, military jets, and the space shuttle all traveling at maximum velocity. The idea is to simulate the frequent incidents of collisions with airborne fowl to test the strength of the windshield. That makes sense, right? Yeah. British engineers heard about the gun and were eager to test it on the windshields of their new high-speed trains. Arrangements were made and a gun was sent to the British engineers. When the gun was fired... The engineers stood shocked as the chicken hurled out of the barrel, crashed into the shatterproof shield, smashed it to smithereens, blasted through the control console, snapped the engineer's backrest in two, and embedded itself in the back wall of the cabin like an arrow shot from a bow. The horrified Brits sent NASA the disastrous results of the experiment along with the designs of the windshield asking the U.S. scientists for suggestions. NASA responded with a one-line memo. Defrost the chicken. <laughs> that could be the problem that they were having. <clears throat> um, Tonight we're going to talk about a subject that I think all of us have been there or are there. Warning signs of backsliding. 
What does it mean to backslide? Somebody raise their hand and tell me what that means. To be where once where you were as a Christian and not be backwards from that. Here, I once was at this place in my relationship with the Lord, now I'm not there and sitting back. Worse than what I once was. Farther from God than you were when you when you got saved or or at some other point in life when you grew closer to God and, and now you're not quite as close right. for some reason. I've been there. And I've been there many times. In fact, I've been there more times than I would like to admit. Yeah. But there are some warning signs that it's coming or that you are headed in that direction. And we draw these signs from this particular story in Mark chapter 14. Let's look in verse 27. Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. This is when Jesus was close to his arrest and crucifixion. Okay? For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. And Jesus saith unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. But he spake the more vehemently, if I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise, said they all. Let's pray and then we'll continue. Father, I thank you for your word. And Father, we recognize that your word is living and powerful and exactly what we need to learn the things that we need. And Lord, I do pray that tonight you would open our hearts, clarify our minds, Lord, help us to receive what you have for us. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. In this passage, it's important because it's, it's probably the most common passage that you would go to if you were wanting to learn about someone who backslid. I think we all know that Peter... De definitely took a, a reverse turn in his life at the time that Jesus was crucified. Right. Totally against what he vowed that night. Yeah. He, he, the Bible says vehemently. That means, that means his eyes got kind of crooked. <laughs> and he said, that'll never happen. Yeah. Not with me. and then turned right around hours later and did exactly what Jesus said He would do right. and exactly what He said He wouldn't do. Yeah. Not only that, He went back to fishing. <clears throat> of course, we all know the story, but let's look at the first sign. I believe it's pride. Mm -hmm. Being unwilling to admit that it could happen to me. Mm -hmm. I am beyond that is not a good statement <laughs> mm -hmm. for us to make. As I was looking through this and preparing this, I realized that I made that statement recently mm -hmm. about alcohol. And I think I made it standing right here. The truth is, right now, I don't have any desire for alcohol, but I don't know that it'll be that way in the future. Could the devil at some point tempt me with alcohol? He certainly could. He could tempt me with anything. Yeah. Right now, it just doesn't, doesn't have a whole lot of draw to me. Other things do. But the truth is we all need to be humble enough to readily admit 
that we could fall at any time under any circumstance. And the reason that we need to be readily able to admit that is because we are always on the brink. Mm. And the reason for that is because Satan is always on the prowl. He is always looking for that wonderful opportunity that we give him by letting our our guard down for him to throw it under our legs, trip us up, and laugh loudly because of the blunder that we fell into. All because of pride. Are there certain sins that you think you'd never commit? Sins that you don't think that even Satan himself has the ability to tempt you with? Watch out because you might be right on the brink. Peter made a prideful comment that night when he said, I'll never do that. Right. In fact, I'll die before I do. That's what he said. Kind of prideful, yeah. wouldn't you say? I wonder if things would have turned out differently if he have said, I don't know about these other guys, Jesus, but I might could do that. Mm. What do I need to do to not let that happen? Right. <laughs> I think it would have been a different story, don't you? Amen. But that ain't how it went. <clears throat> Time number two. Apathy. Laziness. Disobedient to small things. Look at verse number 37. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Look at verse 40. And when he returned, he found them, again, found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. That's how I felt like in Sunday school this morning. <clears throat> no slam on Brother Phil. I just get sleepy on Sunday morning for some reason. How many of y'all get sleepy? I think it's sleep deprivation. I don't know. Not really sure. But I do. I just get sleepy. And I don't go to sleep. I just want to. <laughs> and my eyes are heavy. But that was the case here with Peter and Simon. <clears throat> Simon Peter. And, he, and in verse 40 he said, When he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they what to answer him. <laughs> you know how that is when you were supposed to be awake yeah. and someone wakes you up abruptly and you're sitting there wide-eyed and they're saying... What do you think you're doing? And you're going... (laughs) Don't know what to say. You're just kind of caught. You know? But the whole thing was, Jesus was heavy-hearted. I mean, this is hours before the crucifixion, before He was going to be arrested, and He asked them to pray with Him. And he went apart from them to pray, but wanted them to pray over here. But instead, they took a nap. So I think that sometimes our apathy, our laziness, and our disobedience to small things, I think that in, in, in the apostles' mind, that probably it was a small thing. In fact, they may have prayed for about a minute or two and felt like they did what they needed to do and now it's nap time. (laughs) Uh, Who knows? But the, the truth is they did fall asleep, they did take a nap, but it was a small thing to them. Not near as big to them as it was to Jesus because remember, he was over there sweating drops of blood it was so heavy on his heart. Right. I mean, he's fixing to be crucified. He's fixing to make the biggest act of love ever made 
in time. Yes. Because He paid for all the sins of mankind that day. And He was heavy hearted about it. Mm. By the way, when He prayed to God, don't ever feel subpar or non-Christian because you pray to God and say why. Because yeah. that's exactly what Jesus... In fact, He went a little step further than that and said, Father, let this cup pass from Me. In His fleshly body, that's what He wanted. And he said to God, God, is there any way out of this? Can, can, can we come up with something different? Then his spirit took over. And he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. But he did ask for an alternative plan. Yeah. On the cross he even said, Why? Hast thou forsaken me? Sometimes we don't understand. And Jesus did understand. Many times we don't understand. I don't understand why uh, Jeanette and I are having to wait so long to get in our property. I'm sure Brother Tommy don't understand why uh, it's taken so long for his foot to heal. I'm sure, I'm sure that each and every one of you have a similar story where that something is going on that you don't understand. And it's okay to ask God, God, I don't understand. Why is this happening? Yeah. That doesn't mean you're not saved and you don't have faith in God. Amen. So that's what Jesus was doing. He was over there praying. He asked sincerely the apostles to pray with Him. But instead, they fell asleep because of, I believe, <clears throat> apathy. It's, it's not important to me. Right. Laziness. Yeah. <clears throat> Disobedient to small things. And I, I realize that when we look at them, we think, oh my goodness, that's terrible. I mean, Jesus is fixing to be crucified and they went to sleep? That's terrible. Is it? I agree, it, it is. It's terrible. And yet we do it almost every day. We let our sleep yeah. rob us of time we should have been praying yeah. and studying our Bibles. Amen. Right? Yeah. We wait to the very last minute to get up out of bed. Even the alarm clock went off four times. <laughs> and we hit that button on the clock And then finally we roll out of bed, scramble across the floor, sling some clothes on, run out the door, all the while thinking, I'll pray on the way to work. Mm. Well, how does that work? Mm. Jacksonville traffic does not set your mind in the mind of prayer. It does the opposite. That don't work. And by the way, that's not devoted time either. Right. That is shared time. That's good. I mean, how do you like it when you when someone's talking to you and you're looking at them and you're listening to them and all of a sudden they're looking over somewhere else. Mm -hmm. right. And you can tell that they're they're interested in something else and you're talking finally you just kind of quit talking. And you wait for them to realize you quit talking so that they turn back to you and you say, "Are you ready to listen?" Who likes to talk to people like that? And I've, I have to admit, I've been that person. <laughs> but we don't like for someone to give us shared attention. We like undivided attention, right? Right. That's what God wants. Not driving down the road smearing lipstick on and saying, God, help me to have a good day today and help me to act like I should. And He wants us on our knees in our prayer closet or at the couch or by the bed or wherever 
You're going to pray, and He wants us to talk to Him in devoted time. Yes. And when we are allowing our sleep to take precedence over that time, watch out. Mm -hmm. We're in the process of backsliding or are backslidden already. Right. <clears throat> How often do we fail to bring up the name of Jesus for the very same reason? Mm. <clears throat> Sometimes it's as though that we're ashamed. In verse 54, Peter followed Jesus afar off when Jesus had been arrested and he was being taken to Pilate's hall. Yeah. Peter followed him afar off. Remember what Peter said. He said, even if I have to die, I'm going to follow you. Now all of a sudden, it's time for him to either fight for Jesus or not, follow him closely like he always had, but at this point, he's following him afar off. He's, he's watching from a distance to see what's going to happen. I don't know about you, but, uh, you know, if me and two guys agree that we're going to go and fight these other guys and that they're going to they're going to cover me and cover my back and I get there and I start screaming and hollering and I'm ready to fight and I turn around and they're running. Those weren't very good friends, were they? <clears throat> Peter was doing that. He was following from a distance and I'm afraid that sometimes that's what we do. Yeah on a daily basis. We follow Jesus, but from a distance, so that if someone asks, like they did Peter, we can deny it. Brother Bruce, I would never deny Jesus. And that's what Peter said too. In fact, he said it with a pretty high temperature. Yeah. I believe he meant it. Yes. I don't think he was lying on purpose. Mm -hmm. I think he meant it. In fact, I think he meant it so strongly that he cut somebody's ear off because of it. Yeah. But the problem was, he was spiritually weak. When he said it, and when he did it. Yeah. No, we may not verbally tell someone, no, I'm not a Christian. <laughs> not me. We probably wouldn't do that verbally, but we do it in our actions, don't we? Yeah. That's what following Jesus afar off means. <clears throat> Sign number three. To mix and mingle with the world. That's what Peter was doing. Remember he was out there by the fire? Mm -hmm. And they were warming their hands by the fire? Not sure what they were doing there. Maybe it was a regular occurrence. Maybe they had hot dogs, s'mores. Who knows? But they were there by the fire. And that's where Peter was. <clears throat> he was mixing and mingling with the world. Do you... Do you listen to the world's music? Do you hang out at the places that the world hangs out? Do you appear in your appearance just like the world does? There ought to be a difference in a Christian in how they look, how they act, how they react, the things that they do, the places that they go. <clears throat> I felt really out of place yesterday. A friend of mine, his son's going into the army, he invited me to come, and so I did to their going away party for him. And when I got there, <clears throat> it was okay. An hour later, everybody had 
a beer in their hand. Me included. No joke. <clears throat> and so, and some of them, their, their vocabulary was getting a little slurred, and they were getting happy <clears throat> over nothing. And so I felt like I needed to leave, and I did. But I felt out of place. Mm -hmm. When you feel comfortable spending time around unsaved people doing what they do, there's a problem. We're backsliding yeah. or are already backslidden. Right. <clears throat> Light exposes defects. And it uncovers sin. Our responsibility as a Christ follower, better known as a Christian, is to shine the light of Jesus in the darkness of this world. And if our light exposes sin, then those who are sinning are going to feel uncomfortable around you. We were standing there, and I don't know what my friend had told those people who he had invited other than this. He told them that a preacher was coming. <laughs> don't know why he told them that. But <clears throat> anyway, we're standing there talking. Me and my friend and a couple of his friends were standing there. This man and woman pull up. They get out. She walks over, and she's standing there talking. And she's talking about uh, a couple of things here and there, and she's and she said something about that she brought her own beer, and I mean if we are having a party, right? And and my friend says, well, yeah, and she said this. And by the way, where is that preacher you were talking about? <laughs> and. My friend pointed right there at me and said, he's right there. She goes, oh no, oh no, I've just opened my big mouth, haven't I? <clears throat> Light exposes defects in me. When I read the Scripture, the light tells me where I'm wrong. Amen. Right? Then when I see that, I have a job to do. I have a correction to make. Amen. But it also happens out in the world. When we're around people who are not saved, our light that we're supposed to shine is going to expose their sin, maybe not verbally, maybe not out loud, but inside they know. <clears throat> I don't need to be doing this when they're here. Does that happen? Are you shining that kind of a light that when you're around certain people they feel uneasy because of their practices and because of the things that they do or whatever? Because of how they're talking? It can't continue. Something's going to have to give. Either they're going to have to stop it or you're going to have to stop spending time around them. Or else you're going to backslide. That's right. Remember, that's what we're doing. We're looking over some warning signs of backsliding. <clears throat> Sometimes <clears throat> we ask this question What's wrong with it? What's wrong with this? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with doing this or doing that? And by the way, this is not a good question to ask. What's right with it? Yeah. How will this bring honor and glory to God? Yeah. How will this draw me closer to Jesus? Amen. I've heard this question, what's wrong with it? So many times at Camp Tracy that I learned that it carries an attitude of rebellion. I don't want to do right and I want you to prove to me that it's wrong. 
show me some scripture. Show, prove to me that it's wrong. In other words, I'm going to keep doing it regardless of what you tell me, but go ahead, try to prove me wrong. That's the attitude. We may not say all those things, but when the words leave our lips, what's wrong with it? There ought to be a red light that comes on that says, uh-oh, <clears throat> I'm on my way down a slippery slope of backsliding. Let's change the question mm -hmm. to what's right with it. Yeah. How's this going to draw me closer to Jesus? Yeah. Is this going to offend God? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sign number four. Selfishness is a strong sign. In Proverbs chapter 14, the Bible says this, the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. Mm. Selfishness is a huge sign of backsliding. <clears throat> How do you react when you don't get your way? When someone tells you no, you don't know a person until you tell them no. Yeah. Then you learn about who they really are. Mm -hmm. How do you react? How often do you do things for others? <clears throat> In Philippians chapter 2, the Bible says this, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. The mind of Christ is all about others. Mm -hmm. If you studied his life in the, in the New Testament, you would find that everything that he did was to help other people. Amen. Especially on this night that Peter denied him. It was all about other people. So how often do you do things for other people? <clears throat> if we could put a video cam right here and just film an entire day of what we do, where we go, what we say, it would be awfully scary to watch at the end of the day. Because the truth is, selfishness is an infection that infects all of us at some point or another and many times we can't find a good medicine for it. Because it hangs around a long time. Yeah. I fight it regularly and sometimes I lose the fight. The mind of Christ is all about others. And if we're going to not backslide, we're going to have to have the mind of Christ. Doing things for other people. And by the way, that doesn't come natural. I don't wake up in the morning thinking, so who can I be a blessing to today? What can I give up today for someone else? Do you? It doesn't happen naturally. That thing comes by prayer and supplication. We have to be thinking about it on purpose. We have to, and when we do think about it, we have to do something to remind ourselves to do it or else we'll forget about it all over again. Right. It doesn't come natural. And it doesn't hang around long. No. Just like the thing of being thankful... We don't wake up in the morning thankful for a good night's rest. We wake up in the morning mad because it's morning and it's time to get up. And that stupid clock keeps making me madder. <laughs> it doesn't come natural. We have to 
think about others on purpose. You will serve God on purpose. Or you will serve Satan on accident. Mm. It's only two options. Right. Which one are you following? Mm. So if you don't want to be a backslidden, I would suggest that you take these warning signs and look at yourself. Are you being selfish? Are you being lazy and disobedient about little things? And I, you know, and I used the illustration of Bible study and prayer as a little thing, but it didn't. We just look at it like it's a little thing, and we treat it like it's a little thing. Hence, the state of being backslidden. Right, right. Are you following Jesus afar off? Are you ashamed? to stand out as a Christian so that when people ask you why you're different then you can tell them I walked up to a lady the other day to look at a tree she needed an estimate and I looked at I looked at her and she said how are you doing today I said a lot better than I deserve she said why is that I said what cause I was headed for hell and Jesus paid my price and I don't have to go there now. Amen. And she goes, <laughs> I said, are you a Christian? I didn't even hug her yet. I wanted to make sure she was a Christian. <laughs> she said, I said, are you a Christian? She says, yes, I'm a believer. So I hugged her. <clears throat> and, but it gives you an opportunity to share Jesus. Amen. Don't be ashamed. We're on the winning side. Mm -hmm. We have a lot more to be thankful for than they do. Yes. Namely, our eternal destiny. Amen. Okay? And then there's a big list behind that yes. as well. Amen. But check out these warning signs. Are you being unthankful? Are you not thinking about other people? And remember, this has to be done on purpose. We're not going to just wake up and have it stamped on our forehead, do for others today. That don't work. Now you can stamp it on your mirror, or you can stamp it on your, your refrigerator, but you're not going to wake up with it here unless someone in your family put it there while you were sleeping. <laughs> I've thought about doing that before. <clears throat> haven't done it yet. Now I'm only living with one other person and I'm not going to do that to her. <laughs> Are you backslidden? Are you on the way? Are you getting close? I hope not. Check these signs out. Let's pray. Father, I love you and I thank you for loving me. Father, I thank you for being so good to us. And Lord, I, I do pray that you would help us to be humble Help us, Father, not to get to the point that we are not willing to admit that we could mess up and fall into that sin. Lord, help us to regularly check ourselves and make sure that we're not headed in reverse. Father, draw us closer to You and point out to us the areas that we need to, to fix in our life and change. And we'll thank You for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Turn to page 481. 481.